occupation is a fluid term that can be easily manipulated by the powerful and occupying powers. When the occupied is portrayed as violent and the occupier is victim, then democracy and justice have to be redefined. If the international community cannot stop Israel's apartheid wall and the destruction of people and their livelihood, then humanity is at stake. In June 2000, and while the international community is pushing to promote freedom and install democracies throughout the Middle East, Israel decides to reinforce its occupation by encircling the West Bank and Palestinian towns with a separation barrier that is meant to choke the Palestinian population and deprive them from their livelihood. Compared to the 96-mile, 11.8 feet high Berlin Wall that was destroyed in 1989, the Israel Separation Wall extends more than 408 miles and reaches between 6 and 24 feet high. It consists of solid concrete in some areas and a 40-meter complex of trenches 6 to 8 feet deep, barbed wires, electronic surveillance fences, and patrol roads in other areas. The wall, which swallows more than 42% of the West Bank, is in most areas not on or near the 1967 Green Line that divides Palestine from Israel. It snakes its path as deep as 10 miles inside the West Bank and encircles cities like Tulkarm and Kalkilia entirely, thus trapping all in its path and separating Palestinians from their families, homes, land, water, and livelihoods. Numerous villages have already been confiscated, 200,000 people separated, 35,000 meters of irrigation networks seized, 11,400 dunams of agricultural lands confiscated, and 100,000 ancient olive trees destroyed, thus impacting life, agriculture, freedom of movement, water usage, and income. By the time the wall is completed, the numbers will triple. The Ramallah district has been totally separated from nearby Jerusalem. It has been sliced from multiple directions. Massive land grab in most fertile areas and expulsion from areas around Ramallah city have occurred. More than 22 villages have been affected and entire communities have been imprisoned. In nearby Budris, the wall has engulfed most of its fertile land, separating farmers from their agricultural fields and leaving more people with refugee status. As if occupation is not enough to inflict hardship on Palestinians, the whole population now lives in ghettos with freedom of movement restricted to those who possess hard-to-obtain passes from the occupying power. Several neighborhoods have been entirely cut off and farmers now require permits to go to their fields. Intimidation by Israeli soldiers and settlers is becoming a daily reality for everybody. And a simple trip to school or hospital is becoming a risky adventure and ordeal. Immediately after its occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip in 1967, Israel took control of all water resources and prohibited Palestinians from water development and drilling the required infrastructure. To date, not a single permit issued for agriculture or domestic use in Palestinian areas has been granted. In addition to its undeclared agenda of confiscating more land and forcing people to become refugees for the third time, the separation wall aims at isolating more natural water wells owned by Palestinians. More than 31 natural water wells producing 3.8 million cubic meters that serve thousands of Palestinians for agricultural and domestic use have been confiscated. While the annual rainfall accumulation in the region is 47.8 percent in Palestine, 29.7 percent in Israel, 22.5 percent in Jordan, Israel's domestic water use per capita reaches more than 52 percent, leaving 30 percent for Jordan and 18 percent for Palestine. The hardest hit communities are Kalkilia, Tulkarm and Jenin. In 1948, Kalkilia, the second largest accessible water resource in the region after the Jordan River, 
lost 80% of its land to Israel and 70% of its residents became refugees. Today, with 34 natural water wells Kalkilia district is losing 50% of the remaining 20% of its water-rich land to Israel, leaving 36 towns confiscated and 90,000 residents unemployed. With the construction of the wall, Israel's policy of home demolition has intensified. The wall devours everything in its path including agricultural fields and olive groves, as well as inhabited homes. Since its occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip in 1967, Israel has demolished more than 10,000 Palestinian homes as collective punishment, and now the number is dramatically increasing. More Palestinian homes will be demolished to leave room for the wall, and Palestinians are required to foot the bill. The gains for Israel however are tremendous. Israel now gained more land for agriculture, land for settlement expansion, total control of all water resources, a direct link to the Jordan Valley, slicing through the West Bank, and most importantly, an end of a viable Palestinian state. Welcome to the new democracies of the world. Welcome to the war on terrorism. Welcome to blind justice. And welcome to your tax dollars at work.